acceleration is, we'll just use this. DO is going to be 2.70 <coughs> minus 1 is the density of water over 1. Notice for this problem, I'm not changing the units of the density to a kilogram per cubic meter. I can keep it as gram per cubic centimeter because the density, the units cancel with the bottom units, right? And then the units of the A come out to be the same as the units of the G because this portion of it is unitless. So then it's just going to equal times 9.8. So that's what, 1.70 times 9.8, so it's going to accelerate, oh no, no, sorry, 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 the bottom I need to put, something was wrong, I could tell because I was getting an answer greater than 9.8, and I go, wait, I just told them five minutes ago, I can't accelerate more than 9.8, right? That's how you catch yourself. So the bottom is the density of the object, which is uh, 2.70. Okay. Six point oh seven. Okay, so six point oh seven. One seven meters per second squared. So that's still pretty fast. Okay, now how do I do something like this? So now if I've given the acceleration, the desired acceleration, you have to calculate the DO, the effective DO of the object, right? So DO minus one over DO times 9.8 is equal to one, is the desired acceleration. Then cross multiply. Then bring this one down here. 8.8 DO is equal to 9.8. Then DO is equal to 98 over 88. So if you want it to accelerate down at one, it's barely gonna, its density is barely gonna be above, above, above 1.0, right? So 98 over 88. So I just distributed this in, take this over there, then collect like terms. So one point what? gram per cubic centimeter. So this is the effective density of the spherical ball with the air in it, right? I think something is wrong. 
the evil laugh. <laughs> yes. But the first part, wouldn't the volume of the be different from the whole volume of this place? That's true. I was thinking about that. Because it's a hollow bowl, we have to take into account the density of the air that is in there. Right? Because we're assuming, let's see, are we assuming that it's a vacuum inside? Oh, that also depends. What do you mean by a hollow bowl? Right. What we also need to have the we probably would need the density. So I was thinking that I don't have to give you that until we, we get down to the bottom, but the problem has to be a little bit more specific. What do you mean by hollow? If you go by a hollow bowl, have they vacuumed out the inside? Or is it just there? It would crush. Huh? It would crush. It was vacuumed. No, you could still vacuum it out and it's sturdy. No? If you vacuum out the inside. Well, let's just say there's air. Most most of the time, if you go buy a bat, uh, if you go buy a bowl, there's some kind of air inside. So let's just say there's air. Hollow spherical bowl with air. But then I need to also give you the thickness of the the aluminum portion, right? Four centimeter made of aluminum thickness. Uh, let's say 0.1 centimeters. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. 0.1 centimeters. So then, its effective density is no longer 2.70. of the air, so let's go cancel that. So this would have been the case if it was a solid spherical ball, right? Cool, cool, cool. So now, hollow spherical ball, what do we have to do? Well, we have to calculate the density of the object, which is the total mass of the object over the volume of the object, right? Total volume. So what's the mass, the total mass of the object? It's the mass of the aluminum portion of the object, right? Plus the mass of the air portion. So how do you calculate the mass of the aluminum portion? Uh, the density of aluminum times the volume of the aluminum portion, which is what? How do you calculate the volume of the aluminum? 4 thirds pi r cubed minus 4 thirds pi r1 cubed. Can I use 4 pi r squared dr to cheat? <laughs> right? So the, if you do a spherical shell, right, what's the volume of that? 4 thirds pi r2 cubed minus 4 thirds pi r1 cubed. But if the spherical shell is very thin, I could use four, per, 4 pi r squared dr. Is this one thin enough? Is the thickness of the shell much thinner than the radius? Is it 4 centimeter and this is 0.1? I think so. In other words, uh, that long answer is not going to give me an answer that much different than the, sh the short answer. There might be slightly difference, but I can't cheat. Now, if the thickness was 1 centimeter and this is 4, no good. That, you know. Uh, see how calculus always helps? So 4 pi r squared, 4 pi times the radius squared times the thickness. <laughs> right? So the density of aluminum times the thickness of that spherical shell plus the mass of the density of air. What's the density of air? Density of air. 1.3 kilogram per cubic meter, not gram per cubic centimeter. So now I have to change that to gram per cubic centimeter because everything we're all doing in gram per cubic centimeter. So uh, that's gonna be what? Go back three spaces. So one, two, three, so two zeros, right? So point zero, zero, one, three, times the volume of the sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So 
this is the mass of the aluminum, this is the mass of the air, plus the divided by the total volume of the spherical of the spherical ball. Hopefully some things cancel and it makes it easier for us, right? Four, four pi cancels. Three goes up to the top, and I get 2.70 times three, times uh, 16, times 0 0.1, plus three good, multiplies into this and gets rid of the three. So then you just have 0 0.0013 times 64, divided by 64. Actually, this ball might even float, huh? It looks like its density is... Yeah, I think it's gonna float. It's not gonna, let's see. What did that come out? Less than one? Because this is going to cancel this. This is going to go here. It's going to be one fourth, three fourths times this. It's going to be about two times point one is going to be point two. Plus this, this ball is not even going to sink. <laughs> right? So we need to make it, uh, I think we make it a denser ball. Uh, lead or iron or gold. Gold ball. 19.64. Oh yeah, gold ball. Oh wow, they'll make it inexpensive. Mm. <laughs> wow, you steal it from a bank and you hide it in the water. What's the density of gold? Nine, so 19.3. Woo! You know, you take a gold ball, you put it in water and it sinks, and you say, you know what, I'll hide it there until I need it, right? <laughs> so 19.3, that makes this 19.3. Now it's definitely going to sink, right? 64 cancels that. So at uh, what rate uh, will it sink? So now we're going to do the 1.449. It's crazy that even though it's only slightly denser than water, one and a half times denser, it's still sinking in at three meters per second squared. That's pretty fast. Huh. 
Okay, now if you wanted to accelerate down at one meter per second squared, now we should be able to do it pretty quickly. So P, then if the acceleration is given, we can calculate the effective density, which we already did, didn't we? We, we did the DO minus one over DO times 9.8 was one. And we cross multiply. I think we got 1.11. Yeah. Then it's just a matter of going back to this equation and just putting uh, 1.11, right? And then saying, instead of air, what should I do, right? So then here, calculate density of the gas. And uh, which means here, calculate density of the gas. But then this number we know is 1.11. So you're working backwards with the same equation. Density of gas is unknown. Everything else is the same. Cross multiply, subtract this, then divide by 64. Or actually, you can divide by 64 first. That's even easier. Then we have density of gas. You divide by 64, you just have 1.11 minus 1.11. That's it, right? So divide this into here, divide it into here, take this, put it over here, and then you can calculate the density of the gas. <coughs> so it's going to be less dense than air, then, right? because then it will, it will sink lighter. Now, if you want it to accelerate up, what that means is after having, after the ball being already down there, you could take a tube and then suck out the whatever you have and then put in that gas. Now it's gonna go back up, right? So now if you want it to accelerate up at one, what do we do? Uh, <coughs> so basically it's like having the, um, basically ha like having the acceleration be negative, right? So it's almost like invert this. If the acceleration is negative one, then that's like saying one, boom, boom, right? Switch this, the negative one just means now it's opposite, right? So then uh, you wish you should be able to solve it by just Oh, 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 you know what? Just switch these two, All right? Yeah. B is not possible. B is not possible? Yeah, it's negative. Oh, that number is negative? Yeah. Ah, okay. That's weird, huh? Even if it's, you can't create a lighter mm -hmm. gas, huh? Okay, so how about the C? We can say here B not possible. C, what's gonna change? Uh, so basically, we invert this, right? It's one minus D O over D O 9.8 is one. This one goes over there, becomes what? 10.8 DO. So DO is equal to 98 over 108. So of course, the density of the object now has to be effectively less dense than water.
point nine something, right? Point nine. Point nine. Okay, now take that and put it in. Let's see here. Yeah, put it into here. Because this equation doesn't change. But I guess it's going to be impossible again, huh? It's still um, I feel like the reason why you get this is because the, the volumes of you know, the beginning, you think that the derivative, like pretty tiny part, point one centimeters, that actually represents the thick, I mean, the volume of um, that part. You should, you know, take um, the first equation and you go over Because for using that equation, you get the volume of it's only like 3.3. Like using the derivative 4 pi r squared times the point 0.1, you get like 20 or 24, which is a huge difference. Oh, yeah? So it's a the, huge the, the dr is not too small, you're saying? That's not too small. You see, that's what you have to. So he's saying that you should take the actual volume, this guy. So you're saying here, if I do 4.1 cubed minus 4 cubed, times 4 thirds pi, you're not getting the same as uh, this. I use it like uh, 4 cubed minus 3.9 cubed. Because I thought like the 4 is the big R. Of all, you know one. what, I'm gonna use the 4 is the small R okay, because uh, yes. we've been using the 4 thirds pi, this cube over this. Okay, yeah, either one. Try that. Okay, so now let's see here. Uh, Four point one cubed minus sixty four times four times pi divided by three. So you get twenty here. That's twenty. Hmm? Oh, okay, all right. Go ahead. Yeah. See you. It's different, but not that much different. That much? Gold is just so much heavier than any gas. Huh? I think gold is just too much heavier than any gas. Yeah, I wouldn't for the volume. Yeah. So you're saying no matter what gas I'm putting in here, it's cool. not making its density, the effective density, small enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless maybe the bowl was uh, bigger with the yeah. same thickness. Yeah. Yeah. So if this is also impossible, the next one, you could put that on the test. Oh yeah, you could say impossible, and then give it your answer, which is exactly his answer. The bowl doesn't have enough of a radius to fill it up with gas to create either of these two situations. The bowl needs to be bigger. Everything has a reason why it's doing that. But the four pi r squared is okay. That's okay. It doesn't it, that's close it enough. Okay. Yeah, that's not the reason. The ball is just not big enough. Cool. I love that. 